When I was young, there was a popular green slogan used when talking about recycling and sorting trash. It went something like, think globally, act locally. Saving the world was just a matter of separating the plastics from the foodstuffs. In 2021, that slogan might seem woefully idealistic, but it is still a slogan I encounter when met with people and ideas from green circles. In later years, my gut reaction to such words have increasingly become, why should I care about the rest of the world? This is not out of any selfish notion. I simply think we can all agree that life can be hard enough as it is without having to care about the rest of the planet. Focusing on myself and my family has been a natural right-wing response to the growing insanity around us. My goal as a husband and future father, as stated in my very first video, is to be a center of gravity around which something true and lasting may form. Fighting the regime will only result in my own destruction. Focusing on building something true and lasting on the sidelines is my focus, building something in the real world. Many tasks, actions, options, and inventions found in modernity do not bring me true happiness. Things may seem easier on a material plane that, thanks to the technological marvels we possess, but we all feel within ourselves that the spiritual plane is suffering. Recently, I did a stream on the writer Knut Hamsun. I'm going to borrow a thought from him. A car may get you from point A to B faster than a horse, but the real cost is placed on your human soul when you forget to make the time for living. I recently did a stream detailing some more of his writings and thoughts. If you haven't watched it yet, I recommend taking a look. I wish to speak more on one path that has yielded great success in giving me both happiness and a sense of belonging. Actions that involve the act of creating and putting yourself in unfamiliar territory. Throughout my millennial life, I have defeated countless bosses in an infinite number of video games. I have laughed at a million episodes of comedy shows and enjoyed even more movies that I cannot even remember the plot to. But these things do not bring me happiness. What I draw the deepest happiness and sense of belonging from is the deck I built with my father. The painting jobs my wife have done all around the house. The hedge I trimmed last month. As painful as it might be for us to admit, the boomers were onto something when they told you to buy property. This isn't to say that life has no room for leisure, only that it is fleeting. True connection to my surroundings have come from creating something real. And, as Jordan Peterson would say, accepting and shouldering responsibility for my surroundings. By this creation or labor, I mean any pure action that results in you interfacing with the land or a community in order to add value. This can take the form of traditional modes of art and expression such as paintings, poems, songs, and movies. It can also take the form of more traditional homesteading activities, gardening, landscaping, creating a piece of furniture. Some have even turned to farming carrots. In a sense, these videos are a form of expression in the hope that I can add some value to the online community of like-minded people. I can already hear in the back of my own millennial mind a voice calling me cringe, a voice criticizing me for trying to do something I am not perfect at. You should reject this notion and do your best to embrace actions performed with authenticity and without irony. The individual creations may not be masterpieces, but they do not have to be. By challenging yourself and placing standards on your life and your surroundings, you will have a much stronger and lasting connection to an actual reality. The creations only have to be good enough to make you want to take care of them. This act of creation roots you to the object's existence. By investing in the land or into a community, you connect yourself to both the future and the past simultaneously. By creating, you are sharing the metaphysical space with the past via creative influences, guidance, and past stewardship. You connect yourself to the future by taking on the role as the steward and custodian of your creation. By becoming the steward of your surroundings, you bind yourself to the land and force a community into being through standards of excellence. Your position is then firmly within the traditional world making it easier to achieve a broader perspective 
a Dionysian state, if you will. The community that forms may span your closest family or your neighborhood, even larger should you possess the qualities of a king and a leader. If you are successful in this, you will find that people will inevitably be drawn to your way of life. People seeking truth in the fog of modern life will see your action as a guiding light. A revised slogan, then, for a right wing living in the ashes. Think locally, act locally. This path to meaning brushes against the term path of the left hand found in Julius Evola's book, The Yoga of Power. This path of action or tantric method aims to put the individual in subconsciously uncomfortable experiences and situations, transforming passivity into activity, achieving a higher freedom and a spirit unmoored from the distractions of modernity. It is important to underline that this path is not for everyone. Evola outlines another path, the path of the right hand, which is the path of contemplation and understanding. Archetypically, these paths form what could be called for us millennials steeped in video games and Dungeons and Dragons, the path of the builder and the path of the sage. I realize the irony of invoking video games as a point of reference in a series of videos where I chastise people for allowing themselves to be consumed by them, but it is important to remember that we can truly never escape our time. As some choose to put it, like it or not, these are the waters that we all swim in. At the end of the day, leisure is a part of life just as much as our pursuit of an ideal. Like in a video game, it is important to recognize your strengths and weaknesses. A warrior will not be able to do the work of a sage or ascetic, and vice versa. In fact, both Evola and the Hindu text he relies on in exploring these concepts warn you that you should only follow the path that calls to you. I thus present to you a path to tradition by a creation of something real, whatever its form, whatever its size. The potential for creation is limitless. As long as it requires interfacing with reality, it will ground you to it. It will keep you from sliding off the back of the metaphorical tiger and falling victim to the siren song of whatever new controversy is raging on Twitter, whatever blackpilling thing happened in politics this week. It will help you look further ahead into the future and deeper back into the past. Mm -hmm.